thing. The thing is, a lot of um, addicts, it's really a spiritual condition where there's something they're lacking internally that is causing them to use, whether it be, um, you know, maybe they're just insecure. They had a, something in their upbringing that caused them to have like a mental health issue. And usually people that have addiction issues also have a co, um, a co, you know, Occurring. I'm trying to think what I'm saying. Yeah. They also have a mental health <laughs> diagnosis, a co-diagnosis of mental health. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of people, when they hit their teenage years, they do not get diagnosed correctly, or it takes until them hitting a rehab to get diagnosed. Now, the issue with that is a lot of these doctors just like to look at you and write a script before they even know you. And that's half the issue is that we have a lot of the pharmaceutical companies that have been pushing medications and so forth onto parents which then leads to their children having addictions. And I'm not saying that every person that takes a prescription is an addict. I'm not saying every prescription is bad. I'm not saying every provider is a horrible person because they're not. We have a lot of amazing doctors and care providers. It's the fact that some of them just do not know better and this is what they've been taught. Because what do you do when you go to school and you're taught something, don't you repeat and act the way that you've been taught? You do. So this is something they've been passed down to. So now we have an epidemic and I did not start from a pill bottle that was given to me by a doctor, no. But the people around me did. And that's how I got those pills, okay? So now here's me and my sister, you know, we're heroin addicts. And I managed to stay clean. I'm a nurse now. I got my nursing degree while on drug court, okay? The first one to do that from Chautauqua County. Also, uh, you know, I have an organization now. I'm a mother of a five-year-old that actually has her mom. That's very important. Um, my sister was going to have probation after graduating drug court and she felt that she had gotten the raw end of the deal because we both had been co-defendants and basically I had got let off because I was a nurse. They were like, oh, she's a nurse. She's doing great. We want to show her she can have a life. I was 20 years old. You know, they didn't want to take my life from me. So my sister didn't have the voice that I do that carries where I ask for help I advocate for myself I know that for me to get what I want I have to ask for it and I have to want it well she was not the same way she was afraid to speak to people she felt people were against her she didn't understand that she was her own worst enemy just like I was at one point I experienced many 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 bad things but I didn't let that hold me back from growing that's actually what makes me this person. If I had not experienced addiction, I would not be the person I am today. I would probably be a much lesser version of myself. And I probably wouldn't be where I am as far as success-wise, unfortunately. Uh, but she, she didn't take the time to reach out when she started struggling. She was going through mental health crises and not asking Drug Corp for help because she felt she couldn't. And a lot of people like myself felt like, why don't you just get your act together? And I said this. I said this myself. As a recovering addict, I judged my sister for not being... Uh, maybe mentally stable enough to stay sober because I'm going to tell you this a lot of people are going to relapse around you They're not going to get it the first time if they do good for them I'm glad but you have to bear with them. It's a process. It can take years It is not something that just goes away. It sticks with you for the rest of your life There are days when I think about doing heroin does it mean I'm gonna do it? No But does it mean I think about? do you think about eating grilled cheese when you're on a diet? <laughs> right, okay. So what I'm saying is is like that does happen. It's normal. We we have intrusive thoughts that we can't always control, but the fact is what do we do about them? Are, do we have the right support system to take care of that? Do we have people around us that we can talk to when we have these thoughts so that we don't do it? Do we? And the thing is we don't have enough. All these treatment centers, I, my sister walked into ECMC to get treatment and they denied her and they did her autopsy. Think about that. Isn't it ironic? That's ironic that we don't have enough spots for people that really want help. So we tell them to get help, but then when they want it, we don't have the treatment for them. So what do we do? We need more funding. That's huge. We need a lot of things. And, you know, I know I'm kind of bouncing around, but, you know, my sister, she went in front of the judge. My mom had wrote her a letter to get her off probation because she felt that my sister was ready. She wanted her to live her life. And the thing is, we, we butted heads on this. I told her you're going to kill her. She needs probation, blah, blah. The thing is, probation only prolongs the life of somebody who doesn't want it. So if they do not want treatment and they do not want to recover, the chance of them getting better could happen in that time period that they're on probation. Yes. But also, if they get right off, they don't realize they have no tolerance when they get off. If they go and they use, 
nine out of ten times, they're probably going to pass away. Now, my sister was taking a prescription called gabapentin. It works on the GABA receptors of the brain, which basically potentiates any other opioid, pretty much almost any other drug. So she had been taking these for her anxiety per se. They're not, they're something that's readily abused because when mixed with other drugs, it creates a stronger effect. Or people that are withdrawing from say heroin or any other opioid, they take it in order to feel better per se. Well, she had taken about 10 of those the night before to curb her anxiety per se. And the next day, she went into her sentencing to either get three years of probation or not. And she went for the judge and he said, you know what, Whitney, you did everything that you needed to do, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you probation. And this was after drug court. She literally looked at the judge and said, judge, you saved my life. Two hours later, she was found dead in a car in Hamburg behind a credit union. 20 years old. Okay. Her boyfriend had set up to meet her at two o'clock and he could not meet her in time to meet the drug dealer and they had a plan they were going to do it once only once they had narcan they had everything so this would go right because they knew the dangers it wasn't something that they didn't know but they decided if she was going on probation they were going to do it one more time and it was over and it was over but you know she had that choice at the end of the day to decide this is the chance for me to change my life i don't have probation anymore she could have done that and moved forward and done anything that she wanted but she chose heroin. Why would we do that? Do you think us drug addicts want to die? Because I don't want to die. I don't, I don't want, you know, I don't want my family to die. I don't want my sister to die. I don't want, you know, these people, I, I love them. I, I don't, I, you know, it's just the fact that we have to care about ourselves. And if other people are judging us and stigmatizing us, how are we ever going to grow if other people are not letting us? You know, and I, I'm not saying that any of you are that way, but I know I've been judged by a hell of a lot of people, me as a nurse, with doing nothing, absolutely nothing, just being a normal human that had a bad past. I've been judged. Do I care? No. But other people do, and it holds them back. So um, I, I know this, this is kind of rambling on a little long, but I want you to try to empathize people that are going through this. They're not always going to want it. They're not always going to jump when you say jump and get clean right then. But you have to walk them through the process and be an emotional support. It doesn't mean hand them money. You never hand a drug addict money. I'm sorry. Just don't do it. Uh, but you are allowed to be there for them and love them and care for them. That is true, because you know what? You want to know that if they go in the ground one day that you did everything you could, and it doesn't mean enabling their addiction. It just means loving them, because they cannot love themselves right now. And that's it. Um, but we have a booth over there. I have shirts. They are $20 for a shirt. I also have a raffle as well. Um, we've had a generous donation over the past couple da days from somebody I will not say. Uh, my page has reached 45,000 people. I post videos interviewing people that are in recovery and I do lots and lots of stories. We're trying to start meetings. I'm from Westfield, New York, which is about an hour and a half away. So we don't have a lot of meetings and we don't have a lot of awareness out there. So if any of you want to get involved or you want to share your story, just find me. I'll be at that little booth down there. And uh, I'm more than willing to tape you and do some small interviews today. But um, yeah, so basically, all I'm going to wrap this up is, is you have two choices, okay? If you are in recovery, you can either be me and you can fight for your life every day and just hope that you make it, but do everything you need to to make it. Hi, squirrel. Or two, you can choose the other route and not say anything. You can let all that pain ball up inside you so that when it gets you, you don't even know it hit you. And there you are, you're gone. So make your choice today. And if you're not an addict, make your choice on the type of person you're going to be. Because regardless of whether you're a drug addict or not, are you living a decent life? Are you empathizing for other people? What are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Are you helping other people? Because if you're not, when you're at the end of your life, I hope that you feel like you've done everything you could to help others. Because you will feel so good. You will feel like you did everything you could, and that's amazing. I, I don't think that feeling, I've watched people pass away from here to China, and you know what? The ones that have done good things in their life, they aren't worried about a damn thing. So it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all I got, guys. Thank you for listening to me speak. <laughs>